Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Simple C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about variables and operators. So it's often convenient in our programs if we can give a logical name to a piece of data, right? So instead of just having the number 10 or 12, we can give it a name like sum or product. Now, let's look at the basics of how we can do this. So we have a simple uh, C++ program already set up. So we're including print already, so we can maybe print some things out to the screen, and we have our main function. Now, the way that we get started with a variable is we first have to declare it. And this is basically, basically just telling the compiler, hey, I want a uh, particular data type with a particular name. So for a declaration here, we can say, I want an integer named A. Right? And that's all we really need to do to declare um, a variable. We just need a type and a name here. Now we can go even further with this, and it's often good practice to do so, where we can do both declaration and initialization. So here I can say I want an integer named a, and I want to set it equal to 5 here. And the compiler will go ahead and say, hey, OK, every time you use a here, I'm going to know that it's an integer. So whenever I do operations with A, I know that A is an integer. And in this case, A is going to be initialized with the value five here. So furthermore, we can maybe make another integer named B, give it the uh, value 10, and we can create an integer sum here and set it equal to A plus B here. So in this case, because a and b are integers and we're using this addition operator, we're doing integer addition between a and b. So our compiler is going to use the information about this type, right, integer here, to know what kind of instruction it needs to generate here. And furthermore, it knows the size of these values here. So 5 and 10 are both integers here, which tend to be a four bytes inside. So the compiler needs to make sure to reserve um, usually four bytes of memory for each of these uh, values here. Now we can use other types as well. So instead of integers, maybe we can use uh, floats here. So we can have uh, you know fractional numbers. So instead of five, it could be 5.0f, right? For a single precision floating point number. Likewise, 10.0f uh, for 10. Now in this case, right, our addition operator here has a slightly different meaning. Instead of doing integer addition on these two numbers, it's going to be doing uh, floating point addition. Now, the reason why this distinction is important is because um, uh, that might lead to a different instruction that gets generated, right? There might be an integer add instruction that's going through one piece of the hardware and an, a uh, floating point um, addition that's going through a completely different part of our underlying hardware here. So despite the fact that this plus sign um, you know, this addition operator or plus operator looks the same for these two types, it might be doing something very different underneath the hood. And we've talked about this in the past when it comes to things like, um, you know, maybe adding two strings together, right? There's no real mathematical operation going on here. Plus in that context might mean something like string concatenation, right? Where we're combining uh, two strings together into a new string. Okay. Now, you know, we've done some addition here. We can also print out our result. So we'll use to print like we looked at in the last video. So here we'll say, you know, the sum of A and B is, and we'll go ahead and use our arguments here. And we'll pass the, um, we'll pass our variable sum here, All right? That's what we want to go ahead and print out. And you can see that it says the sum of a and b is 15 here, right? So if we go ahead and change these values to, you know, 5.5 .5 and 10.4, of course, our answer is going to change, right? But now instead of having to, you know, keep track of 5.5 .5 and 10.4, um, we can just keep track of these logical names a and b. So this can be very convenient for the programmer. So one thing that was introduced in more recent versions of C++, right? Um, it's not necessarily that new of a feature, but it's a very important one, is this thing called automatic type deduction. Now, the key point behind automatic type deduction is our compiler already knows many of the types inside of our program. So we don't need to explicitly tell our compiler those types. So for example, here we can replace all of these 
um, floats um, that we've specified in this floating point data type with auto, right? So here we say auto A is equal to 5.5F, right, for a single precision floating point number. Same thing with B and sum here. But how exactly does this work? Well, it works on a very simple principle. If we're setting a new variable A equal to 5.5, which is a single precision floating point number, that just means A is going to be a single precision floating point number. So it's using information about the value on the right to determine um, what the type is on the left. And our compiler already has to do this kind of type checking to make sure we're using things correctly. So there's no need to really tell our compiler in advance that this is a float. It already knows that information by looking at the value on the right side of our program. And this can be convenient for a number of reasons, right? One, if we have very long types, say for uh, more complex data structures or templates, um, the names of our types can get quite long. So instead we can use something like auto um, as a convenience. The other thing, it can prevent un, you know, unwanted uh, type conversions here, where the value on the right is one type and we accidentally cast it to a different type by manually specifying. Here, we can't even make that mistake because we've told our compiler, hey, basically just use whatever type is on the right-hand side. Now, one of the things we can't do with auto is we can't just declare a variable with auto. And this should be somewhat intuitive, right? So you can see here, if we try to compile our program, right, without, um, an by just declaring a but not declaring and initializing while using auto it says declaration of auto a has no initializer so auto requires us to do initialization and like i said that should be somewhat intuitive if we're using automatic type deduction our compiler needs some information to deduce the type if we just declare a our compiler does not have enough information does not know if it's an integer, a floating point number, or even if it's something like a hash table. It does not have the right information. Okay, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Kind of the basics of uh, you know using variables inside of our programs, as well as kind of operators um, that are up that are working on these variables. As always, I'll put a link to this example below the video. Now that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick. And I hope you have a nice day.